So let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, thank you all um, for coming tonight, Sarah and Ray, um, as we're trying to finalize uh, the modifications to the uh, first and forest um, stormwater improvements that were done by Mike Laura. Um, mm -hmm. Kimberly Horn has been working uh, directly with uh, MGC for some of the, the modifications that we're actually doing on Second Avenue, um, looking at how do we modify uh, to actually enhance the system on Forest, while at the same time um, working with Mike to take the uh, the enhanced stormwater volumes from uh, Second Avenue that are already part of his design. We just want to make sure that we're uh, we're covered as well. So I'm going to turn it over to Victor Gal, who's the uh, Gaio, who's the actual engineer, um, and let him kind of walk through um, what the improvements are. And then I do want to let you know, Sarah and Ray, um, if you guys do want me to come down after, um, I'd be more than happy to actually have a meeting with you out front so I can kind of walk you through what we're talking about with the limits of some Thank of the you. swales and that stuff. So please feel free to reach out to me. Um, and I'd be more than happy to print a set of plans out we can walk through them hand in hand. So. Anyways, I'll turn it over to you, Victor. Yeah, so um, we, the history of this project is that uh, there they is uh, flooding um, and that occurred uh, along forests um, that um, uh, occurred after the improvements um, where we added inlets along the corridor. Um, in um, you know three four years ago, and um, you know we've been there multiple times, and uh, you know as in, in combination of a high groundwater table, in combination of a clogging of the system because of sediment transport, um, and uh, you know that and then a restricted outfall, um, you know we were able to you know. You know, I know that this is the last iteration because we moved from having like a full roadway, you know, reconstruction and, and improvements uh, to listening to the town and uh, I mean, make sure that we are as the least intrusive as possible um, and uh, also addressing the adverse issues that we had on the project. So, um, so what you see here on the screen, um, is uh, basically um, that we haven't changed the limits widthwise um, of the existing dirt road uh, here or the alignment so on the road. Your, what's the limit right now, Victor? Um, so basically what you see on um, magenta and hatching, yeah. mm -hmm. those, that's the existing dirt road. Um, the reason why you see uh, two different shapes there is yeah. that one is uh, its direction to the contractor grade to drain, you know, basically just drain to the swells adjacent to it, or if, if we identify due to survey that there's some sediment has been transported into ditches and into pipes and we lost some of the grade on the road mm -hmm. that basically regrade that area and we provided uh, grading points so they can reestablish the road basically uh, as it used to be before. So you're saying that if you see, so my house is exactly what you're saying. Yep, you're 100% right. I'm not sure that there is that much of a loss of grading. You see where the 507 is? Yeah. So mm -hmm. between the 506 and the 507, the Carson's house is literally in front of the 506. Mm -hmm. My house is the one in between 506 and 507. Um, for some reason, I don't see a lot of loss of, of uh, grading between the 507 and the 508, but you're 100% right. Between the 506 and the 507, every time it rains, regardless of how much it rains, the water gets stuck in there. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it is the erosion <clears throat> of the road. I'm not sure if it's lack of grading. I'm not sure if it's... Um, but regardless of how much it rains, it stays there for a while. While everything else goes away after 40 minutes, that part does not go away. And it doesn't re it does not reach the drain, the drain that's there. Right. So it's stuck in the middle of the road. I'm sorry, Victor, go ahead. Sarah, that is one thing that, that when Victor and I were out there that we wanted to try and achieve. And so as he starts, it gives you a little idea of what we're doing with the structures and actually putting slotted weirs in them. 
and then actually repitching back away from your house towards the swale to the east, uh, picking up in those two structures. So uh, hopefully that will, once you start to see kind of the evolution of what we're trying to do here, hopefully it'll be a little bit of benefit to you. Perfect. Yeah, so then, so one of the goals, like um, uh, John mentioned, is to have the ability, just slight regrading of those swells that you, you see out there, but have the ability, because right now, in some areas, the grate is higher than the road, uh, and water was not getting into the, the drainage mm -hmm. system. Uh, and by providing a, a modified existing structure, so without any kind of deep construction, uh, modify the, the top of the structures to be able to have that uh, positive flow into, into the system that is out there. Uh, so can you do me a favor, Victor? So you're 100% correct in that as well. The drains are so much higher, and I'm not sure that there was a loss of erosion from the very moment that those drains were installed, they were higher already than mm. the road in itself. Mm. So when you say you're going to, did I, did I hear you correctly when you say you're going to change the structure? The I top. Thought that we will structure. modify the tops. We will be modifying modify the tops. The tops. The to mm. Does that include what goes around, the, like the cement around the drain? So uh, Sarah, what, what that means is that the, the drainage structure is already there, uh, yeah. but the top of the grate, like you recognized, is higher than the road sometimes, and the water is not getting into the top of it. So yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to cut rectangular, uh, we're going to cut a rectangular slot on the sides that are going to be deeper and lower than the road. So instead of going into the grate, it's going to go onto these rectangular slots that are going to be cut out of the concrete on the sides. So I thought. I thought we already had a rectangle cut there already. So, hi, how are you? It's good to see you again. Yes. I didn't know you were on the call. Good to see you. <laughs> hey, um, I, Sarah, to your point, yes, there is a slot that is cut in the structure uh, that's next to you, which is near the 507 on the west side. If you're you, yeah, right yes. there. That right one, there. What we want to do is make that a bigger slot, okay. but we we'll also want to slot those other three structures there that are way okay. higher than the road. And one of the reasons why you see that hatched mark um, is to actually pitch the road back away so that you're actually, we're actually sharing the water load into three inlets versus it all trying to just go to one. Um, and then the intent was that where we have the structure just north of 507 right by your driveway, widening mm -hmm. that slot, but also providing an outfall. And that's what he'll get to later as you get down by 508, is mm -hmm. to actually increase the outfall volume versus just allowing us to control it with the 15 inch pipe that was part of the original installation that was done years ago. So what when we're trying to do is get the, we're trying to increase the volume that we can take out of there into the swale without just relying on a 15 inch pipe to take it all. Do me a favor, can you explain what that means again? Yes. Um, so can you zoom out a little bit, Victor? Thank you. So right now, out of your structure, structure 507, right by your yeah. driveway, there's mm -hmm. a 15 inch pipe that runs right along, almost kind of like right along the line edge of road and it then pumps into a structure that then goes into the swale to the outfall. That's the overflow for the system design. So when the underground exfiltration system backs up, it, it mm. goes and overflows first. through this pipe. It's a 15 inch pipe. It so goes what, to first, is that right? What's that? It goes on to first. Yes, and then it goes down first into the swale and then overflows in the weir. So there's some slight treatment to it before it overflows mm -hmm. in the weir. So what we're proposing to do is lower the grate elevations, not necessarily the grate, but slot it so that those three structures uh, on around 507 um, allow the water to get into the grates because right now they're a little higher than the elevation of the road. And then there's a structure on the east side, just north of 508, right there where his mouse cursor is. 
we're mm -hmm. actually going to add an additional 24 inch RCP pipe that will start to bleed twice the, three times the amount of water really because we're taking both the 15 inch and 24 inch pipe out of the system and into the overflow. So I'm so gonna- our, our constraint yes, has always been the 15 inch overflow mm -hmm. in the original design. And so mm -hmm. we're adding, we're, and Victor, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're maintaining the 15 inch overflow as well as adding to it with mm -hmm. the 24 inch, correct? Correct. And then that 15 okay. inch was also very high. If you look at the inlet, Correct. that From pipe is like really high. So it not only is, um, you know, uh, you know, it has a, a smaller capacity, but also the, the, the flow lines that control the water leaving the, the area is, um, is quite high. Yeah, it, it didn't give it a chance for uh, backing it gave it more of a chance for backing up because it was so high in elevation so we've increased we've improved the flow line through the system mm -hmm. so question for you i know that you're working on second as well and you're going to create the apron and you're going to do some drainage upgrades how how is that being taken into consideration with this design um for some reason I was under the impression we were going to work on second first to see how much drainage or how much water was going to be held by what was happening of, of second to before we did anything on first and forest. That, yeah, and that's where um, both engineers have coordinated the design, but I'm gonna let, you know, how and, um, Victor answer that question, but the, the whole idea is the hydraulic calculations and what are we able to, like you and I were talking, Sarah, in the past, is what can we capture upstream on 2nd mm -hmm. Avenue to help improve what the low spot of 2nd Avenue is taking and pushing through forest. And so we've gotten through that portion of the design and the hydraulic calculations, and that's what uh, Hal, Victor, and Mike Delora are all working on together. Mm -hmm. Sure, and we've been coordinating with Michael Galura every step of the way. So as part of that Second Avenue project that Michael Galura is designing, you know, that is a paving project with, with inlets that he's putting in. So everything coming, from, coming to and from Second are being captured by the inlets that are part of this project and being piped underground. And mm -hmm. uh, Mike, so they're taking care of all that drainage in that Second Avenue basin as part of that Second Avenue project uh, that's being designed uh, uh, as part of that. And so um, once that's captured, it's going to be flowing underneath the ground in pipes. And we've mm -hmm. gotten those flows from, from Michael, and mm -hmm. we made sure to incorporate those flows uh, into our design. And that's why we have to create that 24 inch pipe for the outfall pipe at the right lower elevation so mm -hmm. that the pipe is large enough and it's low enough so that water continuously flushes out the system. So you don't have a condition where it backs up or water, you know, backs up the water and doesn't get to the outfall, which is, you know, that ditch along the lake. So how, believe it or not, our biggest problem Falls. All right. So the very last time that it rained a lot, which I would say was what, probably 2018, 2019, 2018. Um, the drains in front of Melissa's house, which is, if you take a look at 507, is literally across from 507. But what would happen is if you see the one between 506, 507, those, those, Specifically, the one that is on my, you know, on my house, that one does not capture enough water to be able to support the water coming in from forest and from second. So many times it doesn't need to go all the way to 508 in order for that capacity. The, the drains don't have the capacity to hold that water before it even gets to 508. So what would happen is, the water will come down from um, forest and second, um, so from two flows, right? And then what it would do is it would cross through the house that's in front of 506 and then 507, and then it will go 
through, you see where that oak tree is? And the drain between 506, yeah, that one. It will cross that, it will fill that, that drain, it will go over and then it will go around and you see that 507 and then you have like a little line, like a little white line, it will go through there, the majority of the water, big drain, I mean, big uh, flow of water, keep on going. It will go around in the back of my house and it will go into Tony and Diane's house through there. So it wasn't through the 507 to 508 that they will gain that, that they will get that flow. It would go from, it will go across our property into the next house and behind. So even if you add that, if you add the 24 inch pipe to increase capacity by the drain at 507 the problem there's a big problem before you get to that drain and that is literally what's happening uh, i know that keith is not on this call but that's how he's he had problems with his property in front of his house and then it will cross over to our house through there and then it will go around and into Diane and Tony's house, not through 508, but before it go to 508. So one of the things that we're trying to achieve, and that's where the, that's where we're talking about the elevation of the flow levels. Yeah. Um, because that is so high in that structure, just to the right of 507, in the plans, if you go. Victor, can you put your cursor on the one that's in front of Sarah's house by the oak tree? No, the other one, just, yeah, the there you one. go. Yeah, so there's a pipe, it, it, it goes in there and then comes across the street to this structure mm -hmm. and then down the street to this structure. And mm -hmm. then there's an overflow that comes back over there. But there is also coming out of that structure to the structure down here, a 24 inch pipe. So what we're trying mm -hmm. to do is take more advantage of not directing water across back across the street to that one structure you're talking about and mm -hmm. actually bring it down the 24 inch line to this new outfall that basically bypasses the 15 inch pipe. And that's like an emergency, emergency, emergency overflow. Got it. So if it so gets really bad, it's gonna bring Yeah, it so what we're trying, yeah. So what we're trying to do is make that the direction of flow versus it coming back mm -hmm. towards you. So you're and trying to change the flow of the of the water. Correct. So th and okay. that's that's really what we've studied more than anything is the flow diagrams. Okay. And so what we're trying to do is use that as the Katie bar the door, not necessarily the thing we want to use as the overflow. So by looking at the drawings, and you're going to put ditches and swells on the McGee's and Melissa's house. And then you're going to put a little one between the Carson's and our house. And then you're going to put another, we already have a ditch and a swell, I think, if that's what I'm thinking, in front of um, past the drain on 507. So there's yeah. already and that's one. Just really, yeah, and that's just really reshaping that and getting it back into shape. And the one, okay. um, in your front yard, which is the one that is, I guess, to the left of 507, where you see that small yellow band, that's yeah. just reshaping that swale back to what it used to be. And then allowing us to make sure that the slotted uh, weirs work. How wide is that, Dinge? Oh. Uh, I have to defer to that now on that one, Victor. Yeah, this one is about six to seven feet. Um, this is about uh, 12 feet here. It, it just depends. And these ones, we are regrading the swells that are out there. Mm -hmm. I think the only new swell really is this one right here. And that's because um, there was I a lot of water cursor. from first. Sorry, sorry, Victor, I don't see your cursor. Which one is oh. the one then? The, 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 it's oh. just to the right of 508. So oh, I see. All of oh. these swells here, are basically yeah. regrading the existing swells. Okay. Uh, so the limits are uh, basically the existing width of the swells as they are now. It's just regrading it to have a, provide that positive flow, and okay. for us to meet that invert at that slots that we're providing on the structure. Mm -hmm. the, I think the only new swell that we uh, added was this one right here, but it was because 
we have a lot of flow from first coming in here. Uh, and we wanted to be able to use this available uh, green area to, um, to, to catch it because of grading, there's a low point here. And then to be able to- I am so sorry, Victor, oh. do me a favor. Can yeah. you zoom out because I can't see the new one. Is it, are you pointing? Okay, I see it now. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, perfect, thank you. Yeah, so this is the, the only one that then we try to, I guess, avoid any kind of landscape or trees in here. Sure. Uh, but that's the only new one that we have here. Okay. Uh, um, are we keeping our oak tree? Yes. I'm assuming so that based, if you're saying you're just regrading, yeah, I truly yeah. appreciate that. I know that or we, on your original drawings, that oak tree was going to go. <laughs> right. And really, that's the limitation of the swale in front of your house is that oak tree right there. So we made sure to stay away from it. And if okay. you zoom out, Victor, it's also important to note that what also helps you, Sarah, is mm -hmm. that the existing ground, Victor, if you could point to the east side of 506 and 507, mm -hmm. um, kind of the properties outside the right-of-way. Oh, everything yeah. the, is higher than your property. So it right is, now yeah. everything flows towards the road and yep. then you know your property is kind of a low spot. So really yep. what I think is also gonna really help is you see that wider ditch in yellow. And the yep. reason why we're able to do a little bit wider is that area is relatively clear from landscaping, it's just sodded. And mm -hmm. so we're able to grade a wider ditch and it's gonna be sodded and it's not gonna be too deep so it won't be unpleasing to the eye. But what we're going to do is with that bigger ditch between 506 to about 507, that bigger ditch is going to catch more water coming towards your lot. And also those inlets, how we cut them out, is going to mm -hmm. drain those quicker into the pipes, which we've also upsized to be bigger. So we've kind of tried to do our best to take into account what we call the overland flow, as well mm -hmm. as trying to flush it out underground through the pipes as soon as possible. Perfect. And in addition, um, Howard, we're, we're, we also want to regrade the, the road so it slopes away from Sarah's yes, I was going to ask the larger the swale. That's that's the hash marks there, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Looking at you, looking at pitching the road back towards the larger swale and away from you. So, how often are you going to regrade the road? Well, <laughs> that, uh, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to give that one off to Tanya. But you know what? What the whole idea is, and we're doing it. We're in in. In fairness to Tanya and Sarah, I don't know if you met Tanya yet, but she's one of our, she's the new public works director. Um, we are working with her on an overall stormwater maintenance program. So as we leave projects that we give them the plan so that they know how the roads should be shaped and modified. We're also okay. looking at different road materials that still have the same aesthetic look, but yet allow us to not have washouts and some other stuff. So she and I are in the throes of working on a lot of other things. Um, so the intent is for us to, you know, as we get these grading plans is to then blend those into, as we do new projects, into our stormwater maintenance plan, as well as our road maintenance plan, mm -hmm. um, which we've never had before. So that's, that's something that we're working on. And thank you, Tanya, for uh, stepping up to the plate and really making sure that that happens. And if you do need me to come out, Sarah, and just kind of walk you through this, mm -hmm. um, I'll bring Tanya with me. I'd love to introduce you to her. Oh, we'll that'll be a pleasure. pleasure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I have a question for you. So when we're looking at materials, um, we've changed or the town has changed the materials on our road. It used to be a full sand road. Now it's kind of like a, it's not full sand. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've changed to, we've changed to, um, year and years and years ago, we went to a, uh, a shell material that has a lot more cohesion properties to it versus mm -hmm. sand, because we had a lot of people kept getting stuck in the sand roads. Um, but we were looking for a product that provided us proper drainage, but also really good road stabilization um, without a lot of washout. So we are in the throes of looking at, with Kimley Horn, new materials that provide us a whole host of things, an aesthetic look, a reduction of silt going into our basins because we all love our dirt roads, will at the same time providing low dust. It's like, you know, we're trying to find some uh, pixie dust that just, you know, really just comes into the town. And Tanya's done a great job. We've got like five or six different products that we're testing right now. Um, she's done a lot of research on it. Um, 
and actually we're going to, I think she's actually doing a presentation to town council here shortly on a, on a long-term road maintenance program for our dirt roads. And so hopefully we can share that with you as well. Well, hopefully it won't be rocky or it won't be gray or it won't no, be. That's not, the whole idea is to keep the aesthetic look of what we've got. Well, at the same time, providing a stabilized dirt road that doesn't continue to fill all of our structures. Hmm. It's a it's a it's a tall order. Oh wait, Keith Karsten is in the waiting room. Yeah, I texted him and Chad see if they want to get on this call. Man, I'm I'm really kind of new at this because Robert. At the last how long? Until, how long has he been in the waiting room? I have no idea. Okay. So all you do, John, is just go ahead, and if you just allow him, you can, you should be able. Yeah, to he's in. No, he's in now. He's in the call. Keith, so sorry. Hope you haven't been waiting long. I'm new. I'm a newbie at being the uh, administrator. He doesn't have his uh, microphone. Yeah, on he's a uh, yeah. He's no, no worries. Thanks. There he is. Hey Keith, I was telling Sarah too that if you know after this meeting, I'd be more than happy to come down there and just personally meet with both you guys. And um, also on the meeting. Uh, Tanya's here with us. She's our new public works director. Love to have her meet you guys and um, and kind of walk you through just the plans uh, a little bit better. It's been well thought out. We've spent a lot of time looking at it and um, hopefully it'll be a big benefit to you guys. Okay. So you may want to zoom out so Keith can see what his property is going to look like. So he can see the overall picture. Um, the we have forest, um, and then we have some improvements along first. Um, I would just I, I would just uh, you, John, you want me to just recap? Um, so, yeah, so please. Keith, I, and, and I can probably do that quick in a nutshell, Keith, and if I need to, you know, come and see, I, I'd love to do that, introduce you to Tanya. Um, one of the things that we've been looking at is, you know, right now our emergency overflow is a 15-inch pipe um, that actually goes from the structure uh, just uh, to the right of 507 right now. And show them the, the existing, because that's where I want to start. So it goes from the structure of 507 and then comes down and that's only a 15 inch pipe. So one of the things Keith, we're trying to do in this new redesign is actually taking advantage of some of these structures that are really high, putting in some weirs um, to bring them down to a lower elevation, build a swale on the east side opposite of your house and Sarah's, push more water over to the east and then provide an additional 24 inch outfall um, from the structure on the east side of the road. So instead of diverting it back towards Sarah's house is actually bringing the overflow water and looking at flow lines into the swale directly. So the whole idea is to pull it away from you guys, get an overflow pipe that's large in size to push the water out and get it away from the west side of the road. That's the intent of the design in a nutshell. And I'd be more than happy to come down there and meet with you guys if you need to. Yeah, that, uh, you know, just walking it probably be. Uh, um, yeah, it's always helpful. Yeah. Now I noticed Tonya Moore is on the call, John. I'm is sure. that? Yes, I am. Hi, Tonya. Wow. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. So, as you're very familiar with the materials that are going, you know, that are in our current road, what type of materials are you evaluating or putting on, on our road that will keep the same aesthetic but would maintain the drainage for the hydraulics? So, one of the, um, one of the materials that we looked at that we had um, a sample brought in today is bank run shell which is um, something that's being used effectively in other communities that also want a dirt road, but want to be able to also traverse it well and be able to have, um, have it drain well as, as, as well. So we looked at that. Um, there's another um, company that also brought out a sample today that's more of a paver-based um, sub-base, and 
they've been using that really successfully down in Osceola County. They really, really like it on their dirt roads down there. And they found it to be really effective. So we got some of that today as well as a sample. So what we're doing right now, Sarah, is we're looking at several different things. We want to test them out, maybe pilot them in an area or two. Um, let the community come by and take a look at them as well. Drive over them, look at them, touch them, feel them and kind of give us some feedback on, on some of these products. But the goal is to find a, a better, more effective product than we may be currently using now that works and, and cohesively joins the stormwater system with the roadway system. So this is something that is not going to be utilized just on forest. It's going to be used throughout all the dirt roads in downtown Windermere? We're looking, we're looking for something that's going to be something that we can use as a, as a prototype for our town moving forward, hopefully. That's the goal, but it's early stages yet. And it's supposed to, uh, our, our goal is to match the existing color, Absolutely. coloration, feel, yeah. look of what we have now, just with better uh, cohesion and, and terrainability, correct? Exactly, exactly. Because not the, the whole town doesn't need that type of treatment. Uh, it's specifically for problem areas, which, you know, we know pretty much what they are. We're not, it's not, we're, it's not like we're going to pave the whole town with this material and it's not paving at all. It's, it's, it is a natural porous material. Yeah. Be careful with that word. Yeah. <laughs> it's dirt. I know. Yeah, he dirt. said that he said the bad word. Um, but <laughs> what we're trying to do is take a, a, a holistic approach to just trying to keep all the roads. Holistic approach. I like that. Part. Yes. Hey, we Sarah said she liked that, Billy. Um, so, but one I've of met, the things I've that, met, I met Sarah a couple of weeks ago in front of my house. She's delightful, and and thank you. I, Tanya and Sarah, you guys are going to get along great. I just, I just know it. <laughs> I look forward to meeting Tanya. I look forward to meeting you as well. <laughs> well, you let me know when you're available, and uh, when John, when you're available, and I'll definitely be such a pleasure to meet you, Tanya, in person, and to go oh. over the the design. Yeah, Absolutely. do you guys want to try and set that meeting up now? Is there, yeah, absolutely. Because I know Keith's schedule is like cray cray. So, you know, let me find out. Yeah, it's getting a little little lighter over the next couple of weeks. So um, I'd be good anytime after work. Or, um, yeah, yeah my, I, I leave with uh, Chief Ogden on Sunday for our Wind River Ranch thing that we do every year. Keith, I think I was telling you about that. But um, I'm, I'm, I'll be back in, I mean, I could do the 29th or the 30th, like tomorrow or Friday, if that works for you guys. Uh, I am, I got plans tomorrow night, but uh, I'll be around on Friday. You'll be, are you, are you around in town during the damn Friday? And Sarah, what's your schedule look like on Friday? I'll be available on Friday after 1.30. 1.30? How's, does two work for you both? It does for me. I may be able to get home by two. Uh, you want to say three just to put an insurance policy against that? Yeah, three o'clock. And then I'll yeah, let's do three and we'll just meet you down on Forest on Friday. Perfect. I'm putting okay. it in now. Can I ask you one last question before we go? What are the hydraulic calculations for the water Comment that's going to be since since I understood if, if I understood correctly you got the numbers from Mike how much water is going to be retained prior to getting to the Carstens and our house uh, with all the improvements that are taking place on Second and Forest. Yeah, you, you want the the numbers as far as uh, this discharge. It can just be a percentage. Area. It doesn't need yeah. to be the number because the number in itself might not tell me much, but percentage wise might. Um, maybe, Victor, if you pull up your drainage map, maybe you can kind of show oh, okay. um, Sarah, like just physically what the Second Avenue project is supposed to take care of. And mm -hmm. then, you know, that way it'll, it'll provide a level of assurance. Yeah, that'll kind of give you a high, yeah, that'll give you a high level version of what we're yeah. talking about volume wise. So I think, yep, if you look at that, um, second is towards the bottom of the page, southern end. Mm -hmm. So let me see if I can highlight it here. But we, we still work on black and white for contractors. So <laughs> uh, let me see. 
Um, don't have no reason I can't highlight it, but I don't know. Can you see my cursor? Yes. Okay, so the the area coming to uh, this is forest right here. Mm -hmm. Is this area here, and then off the page and back into here, and uh, and then basically half of this block makes its way to the, this area on forest. So um, the uh, a significant amount of area is currently um, running down the uh, swales and roads and making it through this uh, forest corridor mm -hmm. where the second avenue project will be a, a curb and gutter. Uh, is that correct, John? Where, yes. where the, 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 now this flow will be captured in several inlets along the way and then piped with the same size pipe that we have in the, the very upstream of our project. So they're not gonna increase the pipe size, but they will, instead of having this water coming to you uh, through the intersection of second and first, it's gonna be now a uh, pipe um, uh, from the Second Avenue project into our system. And then they, their design in, is incorporates uh, our design into their modeling for that their area. And, and two things, the, the additional thing too is what, one of the things that's gonna happen because we are now gonna be curb and gutter is we'll have a lot cleaner water. So there will be a lot less sediment in it because right now what happens on Second Avenue is the water rushes off the side of the road and picks up a lot of um, sediment from mm -hmm. the edge of pavement. In addition to that, we're also picking some stuff up back on Palm Street and some of the other upper areas. So in hopes that we'll actually be reducing what ends up in that low point at Forest in second, mm -hmm. and then puts it into the system on the north, excuse me, on the west and south sides of the project. So instead of it all coming to Forest, we're trying to catch a lot of it upstream on some of the other inlets that we're doing at the intersections. Because right now, I'm sorry, go ahead, Bill. Is this going to address the, I know there's an awful lot of sediment that comes down forest from mm -hmm. the other direction, from third. Uh, is it going to address that? Uh, yeah, it, it will, because one of the things that we're trying to do is run aprons up uh, pretty high, um, up third uh, uh, forest towards third okay. to actually allow us to drag out some of the dirt before it gets into the system so that we're actually and that's some of the stuff that that's some of the conversations I've had with uh, Mr. Mitchell there because he was a little concerned about how far we were going with the pavement of the apron but the pavement of the mm -hmm. apron was actually dependent upon us trying to reduce the amount of drag of silt coming down third avenue and then Tanya and I are actually working with um, the residents on the corner of 3rd Avenue to redirect some of the water away from it coming down 3rd Avenue and actually pushing it more towards Main Street and some of the other areas. So it's kind of that whole holistic approach. <laughs> I get a so six you're pack you're 100% right. I've got a question. Uh, I'm trying to work on a case. <laughs> We're almost there. There's a lot of sediments coming from 3rd via forest down yes yes um all the way to forest for sure part of the second avenue improvement sarah will actually bring that apron asphalted up that elevation because that is the problem you know i mean we all we the biggest problems that we have in town are where we have um high elevation roads that are dirt it's really mm -hmm. hard to control the you know the loss and the sediment and the you know, you just get a lot of scouring that happens once the, the dirt gets super saturated. You know, you get into the rainy seasons and we have a lot of scouring that happens on a dirt road, so. So the next question I have is how soon are you looking at implementing these plans? Because now you've done the surveying, you've done the, the drawings. Now, are you just spending approval from the town and then start doing the construction? Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to tell you what our mindset's been on uh, as we're doing this step process. One is we had to wait for the second avenue design to get far enough along 
that we could actually make sure hydraulically we're looking at the calculations. Um, mm -hmm. We're far enough along in the Second Avenue design now. Um, I feel like the Forest Avenue design is is ready. Um, I mm -hmm. would defer to how to tell me now that one of the things that we wanted to do is always just make sure that we have buy off from the residents on the solution. And mm -hmm. then once we have the buy off on the residents from the solution, um, it's really how long, how now does it take you to get to construction documents? And then once construction documents out, I'm sure it's gonna take us probably 30 to 40 days to uh, go out to bid. And then mm -hmm. obviously we can get the contractor on board after that. Uh, yeah, John. So once this plan is approved by, um, you know, by the town, and we're uh, we're uh, we're authorized to proceed with helping you guys with the bid package, the construction plans are essentially done, uh, minus any minor tweaks that may come out with your upcoming site visit on Friday. But the plans are are done and they're they're ready to be constructed. So mm -hmm. once we get direction to put together the bid package for you to advertise to contractors, we would need about two weeks to help you with all those documents that you put together for the bid. And then it would be a 30 day advertisement and it's up, you know, up to the time when you would want to advertise that. Yeah, so assuming that it's a 30 day bid, you're two weeks. The next time we probably go to council, the, the Sarah, so the gates for us that we've tried to do is make sure that we get resident approval so that when we do go to town council, we can honestly look them in the face and say, hey, we've met with the residents. They're comfortable with our design. Mm -hmm. um, please approve us to finalize construction documents. Um, hopefully with this meeting, this might be able to occur in May in our May council meeting. And mm -hmm. then that would allow um, Howe and Victor to complete their construction documents, assuming they get done by the end of May. And then you give us 30 days to bid it and everything else. That puts us June, July-ish. Um, then we can get a contractor on board and, you know, hopefully start August, September. How, correct me, but are these not the construction documents? I mean, I understand putting the documents for a bid, but what you showed us is the actual design. Yes. Yeah, so so this was a uh, this was an exhibit just to make things a little bit easier to read. So we color coded it and took out a lot of the call outs. If you could show uh, Sarah the full blown construction drawings. So if you go to like sheet number, maybe your maybe your uh, plan and profile sheet, Victor. Uh, like uh, right uh, right there, Sarah. So mm -hmm. this is all the details that would be needed to build the job. So all of it's done. You see all the call outs for the elevations. You know all the all the information that's needed to build the project. So this is all done and ready to go. Um, so really the bid package is, is stuff like contract documents that the town typically has us help compile. And what we would do is we also provide like a bid tabulation sheet so the quant contractor can fill out quantities, but the plans themselves are, are, are done. Okay. Yeah. So it's really mostly this is just, it's basically putting out. a bit, yeah, it's basically at this point putting a bid package together, which would take us about two weeks to put together and yeah. make sure that Tanya approves it and all that. And then, uh, and then it usually takes us with advertising and all the right stuff. It usually takes us about 30 days to get a contractor on board. Who, how, what is your criteria for the construction company? Um, so the, the, so for bid packages, uh, it's going to be the lowest qualified bidder is typically the approach that the town takes. So what it means by qualified is that the respondents usually have to demonstrate that they've done similar projects in size and scope. So we mm -hmm. typically ask for basically kind of like their construction resume to demonstrate that they've done projects for cities and counties, you know, and the requirements for this one would be they would have to, you know, have worked on, you know, installing drainage structures. They would have to have worked on, you know, uh, grading and, and uh, uh, grading and, and things like that. And so once they meet those, uh, those uh, qualifications, I'll say, then the next thing would be they give the town a price for, for the work. And then the town usually would select the lowest price from the qualified bidders. Hmm. One of the things that we've had to benefit those, Sarah, is that we don't really, a lot of bidders um, don't really see these types of projects. So we actually reach out to the guys that we know we kind of have had success with in the past and just let them know that the bid is out there. And mm -hmm. um, most of the guys that have done some good work for us in the town um, have bid on it in the past. So, John, I think Keith has a question. Oh, sorry. I, I, I'm like sure uh, my Keith, responsibility. Do you raise your hand? 
I think Keith is on me. Yeah. Um, my question was with the tie in uh, on the drainage improvements on Second Avenue, are those going to be, um, we've got perforated um, drainage all the way down Forest. And I guess the intent, the way John explained it to me, which made sense to me, was, you know, we've, we're kind of like an underground retention pond uh, down here. Uh, are the piping from Second Avenue, is that all going to be perforated as well, or is that just going to mainline it right into Forest? Well, so right now, Keith, we have a lot of water coming to Forest that we're actually hoping to um, reduce based on upstream issues going west. So I, the intent is that we're going to hopefully reduce that amount. Um, and I believe portions of Second Avenue are slotted pipe for underground retention. Other portions are not, depending on the design. But the hydraulics and the calculations have been coordinated between MGEC and Kimley Horn. Um, the intent is that we, I hope that we have less water coming to your system by the time we're done with Second Avenue improvements because we're capturing stuff upstream, not all going to that low point at, you know, first and, at first or second and fourth. In addition to that, we've also provided the larger 24 inch outfall versus just the 15 inch outfall. So we have both. I'm sorry, go ahead. Where does the outfall go? Um, if you, can you go back to um, your highlighted drawings? Yeah. So we have right now a 15 inch outfall that comes from 50, the 507 um, right there. There's an existing 15 inch outfall that comes out of that to Sarah, by Sarah's house. We're adding um, across the street an additional 24 inch outfall to actually reduce that. And that's actually at a lower flow area. So looking at elevations, we want to take that water out quicker. Right. So that should help tremendously. Um, so there's two things we're doing. One is hopefully reducing the amount of water that ends up in that low pocket on second and forest by working upstream to the west, while at the same time providing a lot more outfall for you guys. That's, okay. the, that's, the, that's the design intent. All right. And, and the first time we had major problems, Mother Nature helped quite a bit when the lake level was high. Is yeah. There, has that eventuality been factored into all of this? If, yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. And that's, that's the reason for the outfall now going from 15 inch to 24 inch. Well, at the same time, maintaining the 15 inch. So you've got once the 24 may get overburdened, then you still got the 15 inch coming on. Right now we're relying on just 15 inch. Right. And, we're also so we got, improving, and we're also improving the swell along first, Victor. If you correct. Want yeah. <laughs> correct. Yeah. And, and actually um, providing <laughs> slotted weirs. So we do have a huge improvement that we're actually doing with the swale with some geogrid and some other stuff. So that will help tremendously as well cool. to yeah, make that outfall swale a lot more efficient. You can show yeah. me how that works when we walk it. That would be, that would be helpful. Yeah. Yeah. So the whole idea is um, we, we, I kind of liken this as to do an, an angioplast on the system. <laughs> I have a question, John, and, and how, and Victor, I, I know um, and no matter what we put in, we're going to have rain events that overwhelm, you know, anything we put in anywhere in town. It's just, that's just the way it is in Florida, you know, especially during hurricane season, that type of thing. But, but this was designed, I assume, to to handle the bulk of those storm events. Yeah. So, so two two parts on that uh, uh, question or that response. One of them is that um, the design was for a twenty five year storm, which which is a severe storm event. Um, you know the so. As far as the system goes, it's designed as an outfall system, which is it's, just not, it's not just a roadside system. It's, it's a design for an outfall system. Like I show in the drainage map, there's a lot of water coming here. So that's what the system is designed for. The other one, the other part of that response is that um, to be able to uh, not be as intrusive as previous versions of this design, we're really working with 
the existing system and within the areas um, without touching the, the road and doing major grading differences. Uh, like, like in other areas, you know, having an open ditch that can allow positive flow and, and, and then help uh, even with the, you know, any kind of loss of soil on the road to basically maintain it in the ditches. Here we have a pipe system. So it will require uh, uh, maintenance, you know, of, uh, not as frequent as obviously what we had before with that pipe that was so high that was basically blocking all the water into uh, all the silt into the system. Now we do have uh, positive flows that will help out tremendously. However, because we're working with the, uh, to maintain some of the existing system without being as intrusive, you know, you know, there will be, you know, some maintenance required on the system to be able to, uh, at some point, any kind of silt that makes it in there to be, be able to clean it out. I think it's a great compromise and uh, especially considering the, you know, the limitations and restrictions that, that you know, what the town puts on you. You guys are between a, a rock and a hard place and a sledgehammer. Sometimes it feels like. So we, I really appreciate all the hard work you guys put, have put into this. And you too, John and Hal. Thank you very much. And Tanya, soon to be. Soon to be, yeah. <laughs> That's a coming. Tanya, though. as we're discussing, I don't know if you heard our question before with the grading and now what Victor mentioned in terms of the maintenance. So I don't think Keith saw where the grading is going to be done on our road. And the question that I was asking before is how often and based on the maintenance that we're discussing. So Keith, if you take a look at where that those the the shaded right. between 506 and 507 you see the lines the hash that's marks additional there. that's going to be additional grading so what i was mentioning is, what i was asking is how often is that going to be graded because where it starts with the karsten's house and then it goes all the way to 507 regardless of and keith did not hear this um how much we do that part of the road is always, it, it takes longer to dry and it doesn't get to the drain. So what I was asking Tonya is, Tonya, how often are you going to maintain the grading to make sure that that does not erode? Okay, so we're, we're in the middle of a, a draft uh, dirt maintenance road program that we're sharing with the town manager that we shared with him earlier this week. And John and I will be discussing that with him for his review and comment. Um, but obviously, we want to ensure that we're grading enough, but we're not overgrading because if you overgrade, you can cause problems as well. So we have a program that's going to be monitoring. The public works team will be monitoring twice a week, Mondays and Fridays, taking a look at, at the roadways, taking photographs of their condition. Um, and having a database developed that we can share with our engineering teams as well. And we can look at some of the things that are happening, whether it's washboarding, potholes, erosion, um, flooding, things like that. So that's going to be the, the first start is you always want to gather the data. You always want to look at what you're dealing with. And then you want to look at what your, your uh, maintenance plan will involve from, from that point. So that's kind of where we're at, John, wouldn't you say? Yes. And um, so, Keith, one of the things that we're looking at doing with that hash mark um, the hash mark is where we want to look at how do we redirect the water. So in those hash marks, we're actually pushing it back towards the larger swale and away from both your house and Sarah's house in that scenario. And so one of the things we want to do is as we build these new systems and we modify existing systems, that that is coordinated with our roads and drainage folks to make sure that once we get done with the construction, that it stays the way that it was intended based on the intent of the design. And so that's what I'm working with Sarah on. I mean, not Sarah, Tanya, but I will work with Sarah on that. But the whole idea is to make sure that as we finish these projects up, that we're maintaining them to the design intent. And we haven't had that in the past. And that's what Tanya's done a great job on is, is looking at how do we know what we've done and re-establish what was originally engineered and designed. Unfortunately, our dirt roads are fluid after every rainstorm. They're different than they were 20 minutes ago. And so we have to have a plan in place that knows what we're doing and knows how we're reestablishing it back to the consistent elevations that were part of the original design to make sure that 
our stormwater systems are effectively working. And, and the other thing too, and I think Tanya, you and I've talked about this, one of the things that, you know, it's about resident awareness at that point too. If there are issues and are, are things where, you know, roads have gotten washed out or, you know, you've seen how we've originally left it with the original grade and an original design with our contractors. Um, if you start to see variations in that is, you know, having a portal where you, where you can actually say, hey, listen, this road's changed tremendously from what we've had. You can imagine the number of miles of dirt roads we have through this town. And so it's also contract, you know, we want the residents to be just as vigilant as our folks are to help us maintain, you know, leaf debris that gets clogged on top of drains is, you know, do we have our lawn guys that can blow that off and, you know, do we maintain the stuff that's in front of our house? Those are all part of that happiness of us all agreeing that we wanted to have dirt roads and so we all have to take responsibility for it, both from public works as well as residents. Yeah, we've got Richard Gonzalez on our street, so we're all good. Yeah, I'm sure. I, yeah, <laughs> that's the least of my concerns on your road. Um. I think the most important thing that John and I keep talking about, though, is this holistic approach to this this whole issue, and I think that's what's going to help. There's the other six pack right there. Did she just say holistic? She did. We we just made a whole case of beer right there. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you. We had an inside back going. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to punch out. Thank you very much for uh, the quick update. Tanya. Keith, thank you so thank much. You. And, and, uh, and we'll see you on Friday at 3. Okay. All right. See you guys all later. I much prefer to see you on your road than in court. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Bye. All right. We'll see you. Sir, are you good? We'll see you uh, three o'clock on Friday. Thank you very much for everyone's time. I really appreciate it. I know that it has been a design that is taking a lot of effort from Kimberly Horn. Um, Kimberly Horn, I really do hope that it works out, um, as I know that all of you do. And I know that you've worked with a lot of restrictions. So I definitely appreciate how and Victor, all the, the work that you've done. And I'm crossing my fingers that this truly works. No, we're in the meeting. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Thank you, Sarah. Thank, thank you, Sarah. Appreciate that feedback. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. Okay. Tonya, I look forward to meeting you on Friday at 3. John, same here. Bill, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, everybody. Me as well, thank Sarah. You. Thank you.